what's up everybody? Welcome back to a long anticipated Pennsylvania and Berwind episode. Today we are going to be doing some work on the power plant and boy has it been a year for me. In fact, I started recording this episode back in February. So a lot of the clips that you're watching right now, I'm also watching for the first time in about six months and man, it has been a minute. So first, I want to preface this build by saying I really stalled out for a long time building this power plant because I was very intimidated by it. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, I guess first I should introduce where we are. If you're not familiar, we are at the ve very southern end. I believe it's the southern end. Maybe it's the northern end of the Pleasantville secondary. And at the end here, we have a power plant. We get a lot of coal from uh, along the route in various places, and it ends up at this power plant after it's been washed or cleaned or, or whatever it is. So anyway, my thing with this particular build is that it was really challenging because I know absolutely nothing about power plants. So right here in the beginning, I think I kind of just dabbled around the area until I was feeling confident enough to actually jump into the power plant build itself. Now, I spent a lot of time looking at pictures, looking at Google Earth, and trying to just do some research, but you can only garner so much information from, from pictures. Now, the thing is, with my build style, for the most part, I'm an impressionist, right? I build what I see. I don't necessarily fully understand the functions of everything. It's just, for me, it's about just making it look right and making sure things look as close to the real thing as possible. So I sort of took that approach with this particular build. I spent a lot of time looking at reference material and essentially just copying what I saw. But these complexes are so stinking big and so complicated that it was really challenging to decide what to build and what not to build without being completely overwhelmed. I didn't want to build absolutely everything that could go into a power plant because it would have just taken me an eternity to do. And I wanted to get this project done. So I took some time to really distill down what elements of these big you know, facilities are actually worth trying to build. And I think I kind of got some of it right, maybe not all of it. It could be better. And maybe as time goes on, I'll revisit this area and start kind of fleshing things out a little bit better. Um, but for the most part, I think I got the gist down and I'm mostly happy with it. Uh, and I think the surrounding area really supports the build itself. I really like that highway that kind of keeps coming into view and the surrounding farmland. And there's a little bit of work that still needs to be done touching up some of these places or like nearby, uh, which I'll do, you know, on my own or during live streams or whatever it's going to be. But for the most part, I think, I think the Pleasantville secondary is, is basically done with, with the exception of a few tweaks. There's a few trees that need to be filled in some spots around some stream beds and a few background like mountain ridges and that sort of thing need to be filled in just so that you can't see the edge of the baseboards or, you know, the edge of the planet. Uh, but otherwise, I think this whole area is done, which moves the needle very significantly for the PNB being completed here. Uh, so I'm, I'm super excited about that, and uh, I'll, I guess I'll talk about those plans uh, throughout this video. Uh, but yeah, I started this build way back in February, and I've had an absolutely insane year. I'm not going to go into details now. Uh, I'll talk about it during my next live stream. Um, but I just didn't have a whole lot of time to devote to producing these videos. I, I have been working in the game and uh, working on the PNB, and I've actually got a lot of work done around the route. I've been working on Grafton, I've been working around the paper mill, the Huntington paper mill, I've been working around Allegheny. Uh, so there has been a lot of progress made on the route, just, just off camera. You guys haven't really seen much of that uh, progress, unless you're a patron. A lot of times I've been doing uh, this work during the Patreon live streams, which are every month, or the Patreon hangouts, which are every Wednesday, uh, every Wednesday evening. Uh, so I'll do like a little stream or, you know, whatever during the hangout. Uh, but anyway, back to talking about this particular build. The main takeaway here for me was kit bashing, uh, because a lot of the power plants that we have in the game are a little bit too simplified for my liking. And lately, you know, I've been playing this game for, I don't know, 20 years now. A lot of the assets are feeling kind of dull to me, and I've spoken about this in previous episodes, previous videos. So my thing in, in this day and age right now, or in 2023, is to do a lot of kit bashing. Taking buildings and clipping them together, combining them with other buildings, and sort of mixing and matching things to make them uh, sort of into a new structure or make them look right. And, you know, 
it's not just how the game, you know, what looks good in the game. This is kind of how real life works, right? Like a lot of times you have an existing structure and instead of it being torn down, they upgrade it or they build another structure that's connected to it. So there's a lot of variation in real life and it gives a lot of character to, uh, you know, big industries like this that are massive complexes and are really comprised of like a conglomeration of several, several buildings that have multiple different functions on the property doing different things. God knows what exactly happens at all of them. I would even imagine that people who work at facilities like this probably don't know everything that is going on in each of these buildings. So if, for somebody like me, I feel less bad if, I guess maybe if I just think that. But anyway, I wanted to make sure that all these buildings felt like they were connected by actually connecting them. I saw I spent a lot of time using pipes and duct work and things like that to sort of connect the structures together and make them feel like one big cohesive facility that, uh, you know, is integrated together. Obviously, you got to add some details around the property as well, which I do dabble around with here and there. Um, but overall, I didn't want to overwhelm this part of the route with too much stuff. I didn't want it to become another uh, Allegheny or Grafton where I set out to do something very small and simple, and then suddenly it becomes this massive, like, years-long project in itself. You know, this project, the PNB, is big enough as it is, and I've been working on it for so stinking long, I just kind of want it to be done at this point. So I don't want to get involved with another, like, sub-build on this particular project that is going to envelop a whole lot of time. So that's that's sort of the main takeaway there. So I guess, uh, man, this is going to be, this is a long video. I gotta think about what else I'm gonna talk about. So let me cover a little bit of uh, some things that have changed since the last time I did a video and the last time you guys have probably heard from me because I can't even remember the last time I even did like a live stream or anything like that. Um, at this point in, uh, what is this, August, almost September of 23, I've moved the game, uh, I'm sorry, I've moved the PNB into Trains 22. So I've now upgraded everything and I'm now using Surveyor 2.0. Uh, which, uh, I don't do it during this video because this was all filmed before I switched to Trains 22 with Surveyor 2 and all that. Um, but future videos and everything will be in Surveyor 2 and, uh, using Trains 22. Now, if you are looking to get your hands on this route, either as a patron or when it finally comes out, at this point, it's still possible to roll back the build number to, like, 5.0 or something like that, uh, without any issue and run... Uh, the PNB in Trains 2019 as well. I don't know how long that's going to be the case for, but at, as of the recording of this video right now, you could still roll back the uh, the build number in the config file for the route and use it in uh, in a slightly older version of the game. But going forward, I will be keeping up to date with some of the later latest um, versions of the game. I have not moved into the HD terrain. Uh, or I have not moved the PNB into HD terrain yet. I'm afraid that if I do that, it's just going to be another major overhaul, so I'm going to try to keep away from that right now for a little bit. Uh, eventually, yeah, sure, that's probably going to happen, but at the moment and by the time this is going to be released uh, publicly, it's, it's I'm going to not use that right away. Um, uh, but other features I do start to plan on integrating, um, namely procedural track and uh, parallax or... Um, yeah, it's Parallax Textures, right? Uh, is that what it's called? PBR? Parallax, yeah, Parallax Textures. So those things will start being introduced into this, and obviously future videos will be in Surveyor 2, so you'll get to uh, have a better point of view of the new uh, tools and how to use them once you kind of get to you know, see me using them. Uh, so that's super exciting going forward. The other exciting thing is, over the summer I built a new PC, which absolutely is insane. Uh, I put a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what is it, a Core i9, whatever the top of the line one is. It's super fast, and I've got a 4090 graphics card in it, and it's just built way beyond, way beyond anything really reasonable for most people. But for me, uh, it's, it's really important to have something that I can create videos on and also make the video itself in and do it quickly and in a timely fashion and have the highest quality possible. So I built this new PC, and it is just absolutely insanely fast. Uh, I can't wait to do some live streams with it because I'll be able to live stream in a higher resolution with higher frame rates and uh, that's going to be super exciting. We've already done a couple live streams with my patrons on the new rig and it's just nuts. But the biggest takeaway for you guys who watch my videos is that I'll now actually be able to record everything in 4K. 
Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, Joe, your videos are already in 4K. Yes, they're in 4K and they're rendered in 4K for YouTube, but the video itself, the recordings, the clips are not in 4K. They're actually 1080p and then I upscale them in Premiere when I export them. It's sort of a little trick to get a higher resolution on YouTube or a better uh, bit rate because YouTube prioritizes 4K over 1080p videos, so you get a higher bit rate. But anyway, that, I'll spare you the rest of the technical information. I will now be able to shoot um, my videos in proper 4K, so just be prepared because I've already shot some clips in 4K. In fact, I think the, uh, the outro cinematics should be, well, yeah, they're in native 4K. It's not gonna, you're not gonna see the, the benefits of it in this video. But in the next one, it's gonna look really, really sharp. It's gonna look really good. Take note of like the text in the objects menu and the content search filter and stuff right now. Uh, because it's going to be ultra clear in the next videos. So that is super exciting. I'm really pumped about that. And I think it was a worthy upgrade. My my last rig that I've been working on uh, was a few years old. At this point, I built it in 2016 or 2017. So it was beginning to show its age. It was time for an upgrade. And I'm so glad I did. So glad. All right, so back to what's happening on screen. We're still doing some detailing work around the power plant here, just adding some scrap metal loads, uh, not loads, whatever, scrap metal piles, just detritus like laying all over the place, lots of weeds, grasses, uh, things to make the area feel a little less kempt, I suppose would be the term. Um, mainly because I feel like in, in facilities like this, they're not spending a whole lot of time on their landscaping. They're only going to deal with, you know, what needs to be, you know, mowed or clipped or trimmed back. So I wanted things to feel kind of overgrown around buildings. I wanted the thing to feel kind of old and developed. Obviously I'm using, uh, like I said, a whole hodgepodge of different buildings here. I think that that kind of creates some history uh, in, you know, the buildings were upgraded over the years and so on and so forth. Um, when I was looking at Google Earth, the one thing that was really difficult to do is a lot of these power plants that I was using as a reference uh, weren't really in like a 3D view or, or had like recent satellite imagery. So it was kind of difficult to discern what some of the details were around the property. And of course, a lot of these places didn't have a street view to, to reference or anything like that. So it was really just my best guess at a lot of this stuff. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of it is just these bigger picture items, just vehicles parked around the property, um, you know, places to store things, piles of garbage and piles of dirt and, and that sort of thing. So I really just tried to keep in mind what sort of vehicles would they be using here. They're going to have a bunch of construction vehicles because they're pushing around coal and, and that sort of thing. Maybe equipment to maintain the property and keep it uh, in somewhat, you know, usable condition. Um, but, you know, overall, it was just whatever I could see I added here. Uh, I think we're coming up to the end of the power plant clips, and then we're going to move into another part of the Pleasantville uh, video here, or Pleasantville secondary in this video, and uh, I'll talk about what we're going to do there. Okay, so I just peeked ahead. There's still a few more clips before we move out of this area, so I will just continue and talk about some other things that I've been working on uh, for the past couple of months since you guys haven't heard anything else from me. So aside from the PNB, like I said, I've been working around Grafton, I've been working around Allegheny and the Huntington Paper Mill, and I'll show some of those areas off in the outro cinematics, so you'll get a, an idea of some of the stuff that I've been doing there. So the route hasn't been totally idle. I have been working. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking that I haven't, you know, I'm done making videos or whatever. I might have to shorten my video format or change my video format a little bit going forward. The videos might be a little bit shorter. I'm undecided. It's really going to be up to how much time I have to put into this sort of stuff. Um, but other projects that I'm working on, I've got the DBEV, uh, the Dry Brook and Asopas Valley route. The 2019 version, or the updated version for 2019, whatever, uh, should be coming to Jointed Rail very soon. I've updated all the textures, I've updated all the billboard trees, uh, I had to do some updating on some of the, the session rolling stock and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm planning, I'm hoping, I'm, and I'm told, that that will be available to people who have already purchased the route as an update. I believe they did the same thing with Coal Country and Tidewater and, and all that. Um, but otherwise, yes, it will be, the updated version will be available on Jointed Rail very shortly, very soon. And that edition should work in Trains 2019 as well as Trains 22. I tested it in both without any issues. Um, but it, it does look a lot better. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, the other thing I just started working on, and I will definitely be streaming this this year, 
is uh, an update for the dry brook route to modernize it and bring it up to modern times. Now, I don't want to spoil anything. I want to talk about that a little like really in depth during a live stream. So I'm just going to mention that that is something that is going to be coming very soon is like a full uh, overhaul of the route to sort of modernize it and, and imagine it, sort of reimagine it, what it would look like in the 2000 teens or the early 2020s, uh, you know, sort of situation. Um, back to what's going on on screen here. I'm trying to fill in this massive area here uh, that is surrounding the power plant and this big balloon loop track. And I really was completely clueless as to what to do about this. Uh, when I was on Google Earth, I saw a lot of times it was just going through a field or a forest or something like that. So I kind of figured, you know what, I'll just do the same. And I think I ended up copying and pasting a lot of the textures and a lot of the scenery from nearby just over this big empty space in the middle and just sort of tweaking things a little bit to fill up that space. It's nothing super eye-catching or anything like that, but, you know, it fills the space and it looks proper. It looks natural, uh, in my opinion. And, and for me, if I'm operating this, this is probably an AI train running through here anyway. So for me, I'm never really going to see it personally. And I would imagine that a lot of people are probably in the same boat where if you're going to do a big industry like this, you're probably going to just run an AI train through it. Uh, so here I'm just throwing down like a base texture over the whole area. I love these big wide shots where I just textured the, this whole thing. It looks so cool. Um, and uh, we've got our big coal pile in the middle here. I honestly had absolutely no idea what to do with this. And I still am completely clueless if this is correct. The, my idea is that the coal comes in uh, on the freight cars, obviously, it gets unloaded and dumped in that coal shed to an underground, um, I guess it would be like an auger or, or something like that. And it's run up through this conveyor belt into these big cranes and then dumped onto the ground. And then it's pushed around and piled up by all of the excavators and the bulldozers and that sort of thing. And then it's slowly fed into, um, I guess, another conveyor belt, which then goes into the power plant. I have no clue if that's correct, but it looks like it works in my opinion, and it sort of makes sense to me. Uh, if you guys have feedback on that, let me know. I could always come back and change this up and modify it. Um, but this is the idea that I had for this, and it, it fills in the space, and it, it seems to look appropriate uh, as far as I'm concerned, at least. And again, like I said to, to my point before, I'm probably just going to drive a train down here and then let the AI take care of the rest, or it might even be a full AI train. I have no idea. This little building here, it, to me, is the old power plant or an old power station or that sort of thing. Uh, so I just wanted to make it look like it was derelict or abandoned. The building itself is in good shape, uh, but, you know, you put some weeds around it, you make it look a little overgrown. That is a really good way to make a building, uh, to give it some age and make it look a little bit more derelict. Make the road going to it like a dirt road, or maybe there's not even a road going to it anymore because nobody needs to go to it. Um, I spent a lot of time using this BNBY grass. I use a lot of JVC grass, and I've kind of got things down to like a palette of maybe like 20 or 30 grass and shrub assets that I really like to use and that look good in 2019 and 2022. Um, that'll probably be updated over time, you know, as you know, newer assets come out that look a little bit better and have better shadows and that sort of thing or better structure but i think that this uh, collection that i've kind of put together looks really good to me in my opinion and it always it always or i was going to say it doesn't hurt to add some shrubs uh and flowers and like flowering grass and that sort of thing into the uh into the regular grass wild flowers and that sort of thing so jvc has a few of those jvc wild flowers uh, it's nice to just sort of pepper those in and sprinkle them around a little bit to add a little bit of color and a mix of textures. I usually like doing that sort of thing. So I think the power plant is pretty much built at this point. Uh, the only other thing or major gap on Pleasantville Secondary uh, is up here at the, uh, the, the high school in Pleasantville. So I had this uh, large area here that I needed to fill in and I thought maybe some sort of a a game stadium would be appropriate to put here. I do not love this asset, but there was absolutely no way I was going to make a football field from scratch with road markings. I might be insane, but I'm not that insane. So I decided to try to use this asset here and just decorate the surrounding area to make it look a little bit more presentable and, and sort of camouflage it a little. It's far enough away from the tracks that, it, you know, you can get away with it. Just don't look at it too closely, you know, but it, it, it works. It, it fills the space and by adding some splines, some bleachers, some buildings, 
um, fences and that sort of thing around it and kind of surrounding it by trees, grasses, shrubs, and a parking lot, it looks a lot more presentable, especially once you blend in some of the ground textures with it and just sort of make it more of a cohesive thing. It looks a little less dated, I guess, but uh, don't get me wrong, if another asset shows up in the near future that looks better than this, it's absolutely going to be replaced because that grass texture on there is awful. And all the markings on there are very low resolution. It is a very old asset, but you know what? It works, and I think it works just fine. Uh, so while I'm doing this parking lot here, I did not put any vehicles or anything like that. My idea, at this point I knew I was going to be moving the route into 22 so that I could use Surveyor 2. And the benefit there is the multi-selection tool and the, the ability to copy and paste multiple assets at a time. So if you haven't used Surveyor 2 yet, you can grab a whole bunch of assets. They don't even have to be all the same thing. They could be splines and trees and cars and buildings and the ground textures. And you can copy them and you can paste them and you can paste different aspects of them. And you're not locked into pasting it on the grid or like at like a 90 degree angle or 45 degree angle or anything like that. You can just kind of put it wherever you want to. So my idea here was to just leave out the really annoying stuff like parked cars and people and wait until I was in Surveyor 2 and then I can kind of either make a template or go to a different spot on the route and just do a copy and paste and put the vehicles down in there. So I will populate a lot of these areas with more vehicles and that sort of thing in the future. It, there's just no way that I was going to do that right now because in Surveyor Classic, you gotta place the car, and then you gotta rotate the car, and then you gotta move the car, and then you gotta place another car, and then you gotta rotate it, and then you gotta move it in place. And that is three or more clicks per asset, and I just don't have the time to do that. So if I could just copy and paste a whole bunch of them into place all at once, and move them into place and be done with it, then that's, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so other details I'm working in here, I'm putting in some bollards. So somebody can't just drive a vehicle onto uh, onto the field and, you know, do something stupid like that. Uh, I added in some concession stands. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, once I add some more people and parked cars and stuff, uh, it'll be, um, it'll feel a little bit more lively. And the one thing that I don't want to do is add that, 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 what is it, that game uh, asset that's up in, uh, in Vani of the baseball game that's just been going on for centuries now so I don't want that that is a little bit too much for me I really love environmental sounds uh, but I think having like people cheering and a game is a little bit too much maybe like birds chirping and that sort of thing that's all right we're coming into our last clip or two here so before we wrap things up with this particular build and get into the cinematics I just want to mention two more things other projects that I'm working on I have one other video that I did start working on back in like March uh, it is a small one-off project uh, video that will have a route download at the end of it. That'll be the next video that you guys see on the channel. I don't know when it'll be, maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, but I did start recording that a while ago and I should be able to finish that up pretty soon, as soon as I'm done with this one. Uh, the other thing is I have been working a lot on my end scale layout, so if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably have seen the updates there. I tend to post them in my stories and that sort of thing. I do have a whole bunch of footage that I've recorded over the past few months uh, that I hope to put into a couple of shorts uh, episodes, YouTube shorts or Instagram shorts or whatever they're being called these days. That is the next one of the next projects that I'll be working on. And something that I hope to be able to add more of on my channel is more of these shorts. Uh, mainly just focused on my end scale stuff. I don't really know how I could do shorts for trains oriented stuff, but maybe maybe I'll come up with something. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, I do talk about that on my Instagram and uh, one of the um, benefits on the Patreon page is early access to my blog posts, my end scale blog posts. So that is something that I'm also going to be keeping up with again, where I'll talk a little bit more in depth about projects that I'm working on there and techniques and tools and that sort of thing that I'm using. Uh, so those are some other things. And while I'm mentioning the Patreon, we do do, we do do, uh, weekly hangouts every Wednesday at seven o'clock. Uh, we do it on Discord. I'll do a little stream and we get together and have a, a voice chat and hang out. That's a lot of fun. Uh, there's usually a good crew of people there. Occasionally we'll do it on a weekend when people uh, are a little bit more free. 
Um, so if that's something you're interested in, head over to Patreon and check it out. Otherwise, you'll get early access to videos over there. I've got asset packs that are available to different tiers, to the higher tiers. And of course, the top tier has access to all of the routes that I've been working on. So that includes the PNB, the Drybrook, and anything else that I've, I've done in the past as well. And that even includes the Port of LA from way back in the day. But anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Enjoy the cinematics as we close things out here. Uh, I hope to be back at things again. Keep an eye out and ear out for live stream announcements. They will be coming back very soon. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Break, break away